Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Mike Troll, Amsoil Dealer, 146-3115. And today we've got my 89 five liter Mustang. There's some videos going back several years on this car. Uh, the car's been down, long story short, something like three years. And today's the day where we think we might be ready to try to restart. So um, I think I do have an issue with my clutch pedal interlock switch. So when I push the clutch and turn the key, nothing happens. But I can jump the solenoid and turn the engine over. I do have my coil wire disconnected because I was trying to build oil pressure. And we'll see when we connect the coil wire um, if we can go ahead and fire this thing up today. So go ahead, subscribe, like the video guys. That really helps the channel. And let's get into this. So, all right, so Gabe is adding coolant or uh, distilled water. What I'm gonna do is just run distilled water until I know the thing is gonna start and run and get hot. The thermostat's gonna open. And at that point, once we verify everything's good and we don't have to pull this thing apart again, then we'll drain and fill with 50% uh, of the AMSOIL uh, low tox biodegradable coolant. So, all right, we got that in. What we're probably gonna do is try to crank it with the coil wire removed and try to get oil pressure. Matter of fact, let me check the oil, show you guys what we got. All right, so we'll pull the dipstick and let me wipe it and then. So the oil in this engine, guys, if you're not familiar with AMSOIL, it's a 100% synthetic. And it just so happens that I was running the 1540 heavy duty diesel and marine oil in this engine. So this isn't the right dipstick for this engine. It looks like it's majorly overfilled, but it's not. Um, I, I don't know, this is the dipstick that came with the car. Anyway, five quarts after an oil change and this is where it ends up. But look how clean the oil looks. And this oil has been in here for the entire time the car's been down. Amsoil is highly, uh, it's anti-corrosion, the additives in it. So I am not worried about it. Um, I will be changing it after, you know, once the car's running, we get it warmed up, we verify everything, we will be eventually changing the oil. But I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, do this attempt to start with the oil that's in here. This engine does have over 260,000 miles. Um, you know, I've had this car since I was 17 years old, so I'm kind of excited to get it going again and hopefully one day to restore slash modify the car. But until then, just getting it drivable again and teaching my kids to drive on it would be really cool. All right, guys. So what we're gonna do here is my solenoid here, since my clutch safety switch is suspect, we have verified that the car is in neutral and I've got a jumper wire from here and I'm gonna hit the positive uh, cable that comes on my battery. This is gonna energize the solenoid and this is going to turn the engine over. Now I do still have my coil wire disconnected so it's not going to start the car. But what we're gonna be looking for is oil pressure on the dash. The key is turned. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin the engine over and then Gabe's gonna go back with the camera and look for oil pressure. So here's this. Can you go look for oil pressure? You see anything? Still says zero, huh? Well, I guess what we're gonna do is say... So guys, I didn't catch it at the time, but that uh, loop in the sound when the car was turning over, and if you saw the tachometer was doing this up and down, 
that's like a sign of a dead cylinder, right? So I'm pretty sure, well, we'll see later in the video uh, what's going on, but there might be a lifter that the oil drained out of. And so anyway, you'll, you'll see. The sound um, does eventually go away. Anyway, don't want to give too much away. You know, it's it's probably good. It's probably moved a little bit of oil. It's just not enough to build pressure. Let's... Hmm. Maybe, uh, maybe let's try one more time. Because when the engine's cranking, it actually is turning very slow, even compared to a normal idle speed of an engine. So we'll check it one more time. I'll do a few more seconds and see if you can get anything on the gauge. So go ahead. See anything? No. Okay. Well, we're not seeing anything on the oil pressure gauge, but I think we're gonna, here, come a little. We're gonna go ahead and try to start it. Now this water's probably gonna go down if it does start and I'll add some more but so without further ado this is like a moment of truth here um, so obviously yeah I'm gonna have to replace my clutch safety switch but let's get this coil wire on there it is we heard the snap <laughs> yeah, hopefully not. Okay, keys turned, coil wires on. I'm kind of scared. Alright, let's see what happens. Here we go. Whoops. Wow. It started right up, guys. Oh my goodness. It sounds... Here, come closer, Gabe. There's definitely some kind of noise going on. Yeah, guys, I think what we're hearing there is a very loud lifter tick. And so hopefully it doesn't do any long-term damage. But the sound, just just stay tuned and, and see what happens. Um, I don't know. Hey, go look if we got oil pressure. Yeah, it's, up. it's up? Let me look. Get the camera on it. Oh, yeah, we got oil pressure. And my, my gauge is not... It's never been accurate, so I'm not worried about that with it dancing around. What? What's what doing? Come over here. Come over here. Um, yeah, it's slowing down. The, the computer starts it up kind of fast, and then it slows down. It's settling into an idle, but I don't know what that noise is. There's no reason to be scared. So we're gonna observe the water level and see if uh, if the thermostat opens and everything. So, yep, there's the water. So we're just waiting to see if it goes down, but it's crazy, this car is running. I'm trying to figure out what that noise is. These are brand new fuel injectors, I wonder What in the world is that noise? This is crazy. Guys, this car hasn't run in like three years. Oh wow, it just sped itself up. But I literally put fuel injectors and that sound is weird. I put fuel injectors and a pressure regulator. So, guys, let me know in the comments if you have any idea what that noise is, if you can hear that, if the new injectors might make that noise. Okay, so we got a little bit of smoke. after this long. I 
I don't know if that noise could be something with the valve train or what, but I mean, there's the, there's the oil pressure. Ah, uh, it's the exhaust and it's just burning. It what do you think, buddy? What do you think? You've never heard this car run before. Hey guys, for uh, there's my website. If you want to get any Amsoil products, I would love it if you go to my website. The links would be in the pinned comment below. But so here's, I mean, there's a little bit of smoke, but it's not like it's smoking us out. Um, hopefully the rings will loosen up and everything. I think I got an exhaust hanger that's broken there. But I'm just a little bit concerned with what that noise is under the hood. I mean, I've got oil pressure. Oh, wow, my temperature gauge is coming up because I actually replaced if you go back to the videos, I replace my coolant sensors. I replace several sensors while I had the upper intake off. And my coolant gauge had not worked in quite some time. So that's, that's kind of cool. What is that racket? I, I just... I'm gonna have to get a, a stethoscope, guys, or a piece of pipe and try to listen to this thing, but uh, I gotta put my plate back on my 5.0 plate. I thought about maybe cleaning it up and painting it a little bit or something cool, but let's see if this hose is getting hot. Nothing yet. What in the world is that? Well guys, we've got some circulation of coolant and guys, that noise, whatever that noise was is all but gone. I cannot believe how smoothly this car is sitting and idling. But I'm telling you, this is how this car ran before. It was always a good running car and so listen the sound the sound is gone so i don't know i put a screwdriver on the valve cover and i didn't think i heard it in there and i was thinking maybe it was an injector guys comment down below if it's possible for brand new fuel injectors to rattle like that to tick like that but yeah that noise is all but gone Oh yeah, I got heat back now. Heating my, uh, that heater core bypass is hot. This is hot. Yep, we're sending hot water to the radiator. So, I mean, yeah, it would be a good idea to flush the brakes and do all that. And there's a lot we're gonna need to do. Um, you know, we'll drain this and add new coolant and everything but uh, for now the distilled water should be fine I think I want to clear things out and take this thing around the block you know I never I never let my registration or insurance lapse because I never believed it would be down this long I always thought you know it's only gonna be a few months and I'm gonna get the thing running again but uh, it's been like three years just life happens and uh, listen to the idle just it, it's so smooth like this car that's what I'm saying like this has always been a good running car like I don't know what this sounds like yet on the video guys like as I'm recording it but here I'm gonna take the mic and just like I'm not claiming that it's perfect, but 
for what it is, an all original 89 five liter Mustang. I just, yeah, like it's sitting here idling. You heard how easily it started. I, I mean, I barely cranked it and it fired right off. It's quiet. I, I'm just amazed, guys. It's smoothed out. Everything's quiet. It's circulating the distilled water. I see no reason right now not to take this car around the block. I mean, yeah, I need to flush the brake fluid, but I think we can. Uh, I think we can manage. You know, I'll give. I'll give the brake. Hopefully, the brakes aren't like locked up, the calipers or anything. So we'll see. We'll try to take it out in the driveway. Um, but yeah, guys, this is exciting. This is exciting. It's trying to go, I think the parking brake locked up. Wait. There it comes. Ba -ba -da 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 -da. Alright guys, well here it is, fender dents and all, horrible messed up top and all. Uh, what I'm going to do is blow this thing off with my blower and then I don't know if we're going to drive it or not. The brake pedal felt, you know, awful spongy so I don't know what we're going to do with that. But uh... You know, it is what it is. I mean, it's just, it's an old car. And I'm just amazed. I'm just amazed at how it's running right now. First start in three years and it's sitting here idling. Idling real smooth. Whatever that noise was in the beginning, I, you know, I don't know if it was an injector or what, but it's completely gone, whatever that sound was. Pretty cool, guys. Pretty cool. Alright, guys. So, this thing's probably been idling for like half an hour. And silly me, I was low on brake fluid, so I added some brake fluid. I hope I didn't introduce air into the system. But anyway, um, I need to bleed that anyway. Bleed everything and replace the brake fluid. But, I think... I think we're going to try to go for a test drive. Alright, so since my top and back window are so messed up, this car looks better with the top down. And yeah, it's still filthy, but we just want to go for a quick test drive and see what's going on with it. The doors are sagging, everything's like, you know, this car's got a lot of issues, but uh, anyway. Yeah, I guess we need to drop the hood. There's a squeaking. I don't know, it could be that idler pulley. But again, just how smooth the car is idling. Very encouraging. Like I say, this was always a good running car. And special thanks to Gary Vance, the EFI guy. I'll have to find his card later. And uh, let me see if I have it laying around here. Anyway, we'll find him later. He rebuilt my computer, which turned out to be the problem with why my injectors weren't firing. But I went ahead and replaced injectors, so I'm sure after 260,000 miles, 
it's probably gonna help. <laughs> All right, guys, so me and Gabe are in the car. The brake pedal feels a lot better. Um, we're still gonna use extreme caution, but so can you get the shifter? This is one of the first things I ever did to the car was this Hurst shifter. So it's kind of cool, kind of a nostalgic. I can't believe backing this thing out for the first time. But yeah, come up and film, uh, film some stuff, Gabe. So yeah, here we are. And we're trying to see what this thing's gonna do. Oop. What's it? Forget how to drive it. I'm trying to ease off the clutch. There we go. All right, that's first gear. Second gear. All right, and we're just putting through the neighborhood. But yeah, so, yeah, this is, uh, this is kind of cool to have it back out again. And I hope you guys can hear the exhaust cause um, it's pretty cool. In my opinion, now I know a lot of people love the new Mustangs, but in my opinion, there's nothing like a, uh, there's nothing like a 5.0, a Fox 5.0 with um, an off-road H-pipe and Flowmasters. All right, so yeah, I'm really impressed with how this car is driving. Um, let's see here. Uh, I could have gone, but I'm just impressed with the car's idling. It's not trying to die on us. It's running really. Don't want to stall it because I wouldn't be able to restart without. You guys hear that? This thing is lit. Sounds so good. I mean, again, if you if you just built an amazing hot rod, then yeah, this is nothing compared to that. But this is an original car from 1989 with 260,469 miles that hasn't run in three years. And I just started it half an hour ago. And so, here, let me, let me just take it easy and just give it a little bit in second gear. So, all right, so we're, we're just gonna give it a little bit. So this is, oh, I had a little bit of detonation there, so I backed off. Um, now the gas that's in this car is ethanol free. And that, that's why I attribute this thing you know, I'm thankful I never had ethanol gas in here. So I think we get some 93 octane, no ethanol gas and fill this thing up and run some AMSOIL fuel additives through it. I think we're gonna have, I mean, this is just, the way this thing runs is crazy back to second gear and it's just I mean I see no reason we can't drive this to church tonight Gabe I mean other than yeah I don't want to hey guys yeah this has been really exciting so if we just I'm just impressed by how well the car runs and idles after being down for three years you heard me get on it a little bit in the video and I mean aside from a little bit of detonation which you know it's got old gas in it um, we did dump some new 93 octane in maybe a month ago when we tried some things at that point 
So, but I think once we get some brand new gas in here and uh, we'll run some AMSOIL fuel additives through it, I think it's gonna be fine. Um, it, it's just really exciting, guys. So, like, subscribe. Um, if you're into this kind of stuff, and we normally do AMSOIL fluid changes, and guys, my links will be in the pinned comment. I am an AMSOIL dealer, Mike Troll, 1463115. And if you use my link, number1synthetic.com, I get credit for that. I'd really appreciate it. And um, guys, I like to usually share a verse of the day. Hey, Rosie. So from the book of Hebrews, we know that it talks about Jesus as our high priest and it describes him as holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, exalted above the heavens. And uh, I'm thankful for Jesus and his sacrifice and what he's done for us as our great high priest. And so, yeah, guys, praise the Lord. Have a good day. All right, so I found his card. This is the guy who redid the computer on my Mustang, which turned out to be the whole problem with why the injectors weren't firing and the fuel pump would run constantly without shutting off. He had to uh, replace the capacitors. And uh, let's flip it over. So, yeah, if he can help you, here's... Here's his information. Um, thanks, Gary, for all your help.